So, uh, welcome everyone. I'm uh, Lucio Bordonaro, customer service specialist and trainer of uh, Webratio. And uh, today I will uh, show you our brand new product, which is Webratio Mobile Platform 8. Our product uh, allows you to develop mobile applications without writing uh, uh, a single line of code, but just visually programming using our tool. This is the uh, webinar agenda that we will go through this uh, 30 minutes webinar. We will start with a brief uh, introduction about WebRatio as a mobile application development platform. Then uh, we will uh, take a look at the generated mobile, mobile apps characteristics. And uh, we will see how to test and generate a mobile application. Also considering the strategies for working with WebRatio mobile platform. Finally, we will have 15-20 uh, minutes of live overview of uh, WebRatio mobile platform. I will show you how to model and adjust an overview of a mobile app that includes both the front end and the back end. Let's start from WebRatio as a mobile application development platform. So, uh, WebRatio, with our model-driven uh, tool, is a platform that allows to visually uh, program mobile application instead of writing code. This is achieved since uh, mobile, uh, the mobile platform for WebRatio is based on the IFML modeling language. Okay? WebRatio mobile platform also includes the smart code generation, which is a technology that helps you to automatically build cross-platform mobile apps since we both uh, integrate and we both give the possibility of generating uh, Android mobile apps and iOS mobile apps. And our smart code generation technology also allows the communication between a front-end and the standard Java back-end services. The apps that you generate and build with WebRatio are ready to be used in production either on-premises or in our WebRatio cloud. Taking a look at the mobile app development strategies, there are three ways, three ways that are usually, uh, are usually uh, used to develop mobile apps. Starting from native ones, when you develop a native mobile application, you have to create for each platform a different application, also, in, also using a different uh, coding language, for example, you have Java for Android, C Sharp for Windows Phone, and Objective C for iOS. Also, developing uh, native uh, mobile application includes that you have to lose a certain amount of time in learning how the platform works and how you have to build and generate your apps. So these are the native apps. Let's take a look at the web apps. Web apps usually are just one app that runs on different platforms. And usually web apps run on a browser, okay? So they are made with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, basically. Web apps are not really web application, uh, are not really, sorry, mobile applications since they can only be used online, okay? They don't have the offline uh, working. So our idea, our choice was to develop hybrid mobile applications. Hybrid mobile application runs on every on, a, on every platform, okay, on a, all the platform that you want to target. In our situation, it's Android and uh, iOS. 
And you can say that the approach of hybrid mobile application is a, is a midway between the native mobile application and web mobile application, since hybrid mobile applications are run into a container, a native container, a native wrapper, and inside a browser engine. So our, our choice, the web ratio choice, is to abstract from the mobile platform that you want to use and to create the code which is standard and easy to generate. Let's take a look at the architecture of the mobile apps that you develop with WebRatio. The whole structure, the whole architecture is made of containers, okay? So you have one big container which is the phone app application container. The WebRatio generated app is the one that you find the, in the upper uh, left corner, okay? The WebRatio app runs into an HTML rendering engine, which is a web view. The web view communicates with the PhoneGap plugins, okay? And the whole PhoneGap container exchanges information with the mobile operating system using the operating system APIs. Taking a look at the generated code of the mobile application, which are generated by WebRatio, there are a common set of technologies that are well known, like Ionic, Apache Cordova, JData, SQLite, AngularJS, and of course HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript. <clears throat> the mobile app development process includes the backend communication. So the phone gap app the container that we've seen in the previous slide communicates with the backend using a token-based user authentication. We also included the data synchronization algorithm using REST and JSON APIs. So there are calls to remote procedure using REST services. And finally, we introduce and we integrate the seamless app to backend integration. These are all the available combos, okay, all the available combinations that you can create with a client side and a server side automatically generated by web ratio. Okay? So the first situation that you see here tells the story of a mobile app front end for so the client side, which is done with WebRatio, that exchanges uh, messages and communicates with a back end, which is also done in WebRatio. But since our generated code is open, you can use a client side mobile application generated with WebRatio and let this mobile app communicate with a back end made externally from WebRatio. And also the opposite, which is the last uh, combination that you have here. So you can have a mobile app which is uh, developed outside of WebRatio that communicates with a backend which is instead made in WebRatio. Now, the mobile app testing, so after the development phase you want to test and you want to emulate the mobile app on your computer or directly on your mobile device. We will see later in the live demonstration how to emulate on your computer. While to emulate on mobile devices, you can use the WebRatio Mobile Developer app, which is available on Google Play Store or iTunes. This app lets you connect to your development environment instantly, so you can just scanning a QR code or typing the address of your uh, of your development environment, you can connect and you can test your work directly on your device. Now let's uh, let's see the live uh, demonstration of WebRatio Mobile Platform 8. We will start with modeling a mobile application and we will do the same example that you can also find on our learning platform 
at learn.webreshare.com. We will start creating a Hello World sample, which is the first mobile app that we create. And uh, we will use this, this sample to show you, I will use this sample to show you how to generate, run, and test a mobile application. Then we will have a live overview of a mobile app that features the login using both the IFML pattern and the action definition. We will have an overview of the list and details pattern. We will also take a look at the domain model definition and we will know, we will see how the backend synchronization works with data services. Finally, I will show you the process of building a mobile app and we will use our Hello World sample. So, let me open uh, we will show mobile platform, okay. We will start creating a Hello World project. So I'm going to create a new mobile project that I call Hello World. This is the project view, so the view that uh, lists all the views available in your project. I will work inside the app view and I will create a very simple mobile application. This is the welcome screen and uh, <clears throat> into the welcome screen I want to show a welcome message for the user. So I'm going to use a view component to show a message. Okay, let's type also a text that will be shown as message. Let's say something like, uh, welcome to Web Ratio Mobile Platform 8. Okay, so this is our uh, very simple model. We just have one screen with one component. Now let's generate this uh, bio project and see the output. You see that the generation process started in the right bottom corner of WebRatio and when the generation process ends you will see this uh, dashboard, okay? Uh, it works, this emulator, this is the dashboard of the emulator for your mobile application, which is Hello World, works only with Google Chrome, so Let's see how to run the emulator, so let's click on the open emulator button. Otherwise, uh, as I already said into the slides, if you have downloaded the Webration Mobile Developer app on your device, you can scan the QR code that you see here or connect to this URL. Let's see the emulate, let's see how to emulate on our uh, computer. So let's click the open emulator button you see this page loading and uh, this is our emulator, okay, the, bu the built-in uh, emulator that shows the app running on a device. From here you can customize a set of uh, properties like the orientation of the device which can be landscape or portrait and you can also choose the different uh, kind of device that you want to test. So here you set up your emulation environment as you prefer. Okay, so let's now take a look to a, let's now take a look to a way complex uh, mobile application. We will do just the overview. I already prepared a front-end mobile application with his backend. Okay, let's start to, to give a look at the front end of, of the mobile application. As you already seen with the Hello World, we created the IFML model, so the user interaction model inside the app view. Here you have a more detailed uh, model, which includes the login pattern and the list and detail pattern. Starting from the login pattern, here you have 
this screen, okay, which is a particular screen which is marked as login, okay, with a, a form components into the into the screen that asks for uh, the password and the username of the user. Outside the screen, you will find an action, okay, that actually receives the parameters for from the form component and performs the login, okay. So this is, we moved by clicking into the action, we moved from the IFML model to the action definition where you have the input parameters, the operation that you perform, which is the login in these situations, and the available uh, management for the outcome, the outcomes of this operation. After the login, if the user has the credentials, has the right credential, since here there is a screen set which is protected, okay, so only if the user has the right credentials he will be able to see this page, which is the, sorry, this screen, which is the home screen of the mobile application, which includes a welcome message and a list of rewards. The list and detail pattern is uh, realized with two different screens. So one screen shows the list of rewards and another screen will show the details of the selected reward. You see that here there is a selection event which uh, handles the selection of one reward from the list, while from the login form you have a submit event, okay? which submits actually the, the values of username and password. So this is our uh, IFML model for the loyalty mobile uh, client-side application. And let's see what happens if we generate this mobile project. You see the progress of the generation here in the bottom right. As soon as it completes, if you open the browser, you can just close the old emulator uh, window. You will see that the dashboard now is showing the name and all the property of the new mobile project that we generated, so the loyalty mobile project. Our loyalty mobile application is now ready to be tested, so once again, if you have the Vibration Mobile Developer app, you can just scan or type the address. We will, as usual, open the emulator into the browser. So, let's wait a little bit. This is our main screen, okay? This is the login screen that we modeled here with this uh, login form component. This is how it looked like in the uh, mobile application. So let me just type my username and password. Then I will press and uh, start the login uh, action. And after the authentication, it will start to synchronize data as the client side of this mobile application is also connected to a backend which stores actually the real values. So this is our uh, list of rewards, okay? We have a set of rewards that you can see here. This is our uh, home screen, as you can see by the name that is uh, shown in the upper left corner of the, of the screen. This is the welcome message and this is the list. The the arrow that you see here is the selection event, okay, which opens the detail uh, screen. So if you just tap here, you will see the details of the selected reward. Always showing also in this uh, new screen the name of the screen in the upper left corner, okay. In the Bottom left corner, instead we have the back button, which brings the user back to the home screen, where he is able to scroll down this list and take a look to all 
the rewards. Okay? So basically this is the client side model, including the app view and a little bit of action definition just to perform the login. Now let's take a look at the domain model definition. So the information that we show to the user, like the reward distance and the reward type, okay, which are the information that we collect and that we use for the data binding of list and details are defined here into the domain model. Okay? Those entities are also mapped on a back-end project or better on back-end services. Okay? So here you see, for example, we are using into the list and detail the reward type class. Okay? This class is composed of a set of attributes that you can see here which are, for example, the title, description, and so on, including also the image, which is a block type. Okay. As I, as I told you, these uh, classes are mapped also on backend services. In fact, from here, we can see that this uh, reward type class refers to this project, which is the loyalty data services project. Um, and it is referring to the server class named reward type. Okay? I've already prepared my data service project, okay, that you can see here. A data service project uh, has the domain model view, the action definition view, and eventually a service view, but it doesn't have an app view. Okay, it's just a container of uh, a container of the data structure and data services. Here we have the connection with a database, okay, which is this one, that is actually providing the information to our app, okay. Each of those uh, uh, classes is mapped directly on the database. So, for example, the reward type class is mapped on this particular table of the database. So, let's take a look now that we know at least a little bit more on the domain model structure, how the client side communicates with the backend. So, the communication is not done in terms of connection between projects, but it's done in terms of service, okay? So, connection to services. Our loyalty mobile, which is the client side, connect to the data services exposed by the loyalty data services project, okay? And the only services that we have related to data are reward distance and reward type. Each one of these services defines that for the authenticated user we have the possibility of reading data, okay? And that's exactly what we do in the client side app. We just read the data, okay, because it's defined here. Another type of service that you can expose through a data service project are the user services. The only one that we are using is the login service, okay, which basically uh, checks the user credentials and gives back a token, an authentication token for each user, okay? That's why every time that I just reload, I close the emulator uh, dialog and I just reload the emulator, since I already have the token, the app is no longer showing the login form at the very beginning, okay? And every time, let's do it once again, every time that you open the emulator, if you are already logged in, the app will look for new data to synchronize. You, it's, very, it's very quick, but at the beginning of the emulation, you will see that message, synchronizing data, okay, which checks and runs the synchronization algorithm between the client side and the backend. Okay. Now, I just wanted to show you, as last thing, that on the client side, you can also customize the visual identity of your mobile application. 
and you can do it with few clicks, okay? For example, right now our loyalty mobile uh, application is using the loyalty style, okay? I can just change this selection to mobile demo, which is another style that I have in my workplace. I can just save and then generate once again. And with few clicks, you will see that the style and the visual identity of your mobile app changes entirely. Okay? So I just open once again the emulator. Okay? You will see this uh, brief loading and you will see that now we have a completely different mobile app. Okay? You see that the style is changing. Now it's blue. Previously it was in orange. Okay? So with few clicks you can also customize the visual identity of the mobile application. Now, to close and to end our webinar, I'm just going to show you how the build process works, okay? So we have the Hello World mobile project that we created previously. Uh, let's suppose that I want to create an Android build for this uh, project, for this mobile app that I want to test on my physical device. So what I have to do, I have to create a new build configuration for the operating system that I want, so in this case it will be Android. I just click on new and automatically it gets all of the properties that I want, uh, that I already decided at project level. <clears throat> Let's do a debug uh, build. In order to start the build process, you just have to be connected and to stay connected to the Internet as the build process is executed on our servers. Okay? So you just click on Build. You will see uh, this uh, progress, the progress running. Okay? It will take a little amount of time. It depends on, your, uh, on the speed of your Internet connection. Anyway, at the end of the process, the result will be this one, okay? We will have our APK file with the app, with the mobile app ready to run on our device, okay? And this is done directly from the tool. So now it will take some minutes, I think one or two minutes, it depends once again as I already told already told you it depends on the on the internet connection and the speed okay at the end of this process you will see a new window of dashboard you see that now it's loading you see the message build in progress at the end of the build process you will see the QR code to start the download of the mobile app directly on your uh, device or otherwise, you will see uh, a link, okay, a button that you can click and download your APK on your computer. Okay, so let's just wait for the build process to end. It will take, I think, other few seconds. Okay, in the, in the meanwhile, I remember you that on our uh, learning platform that you can find at learn.fabricio.com, uh, we are already publishing material for the mobile version 8. You can find uh, a brief set of tutorials and online lessons. Also, uh, we created some articles that show you how to build and test and build and publish Android applications and also iOS applications. Okay, let's go back after this message to the build process that ended in one minute and uh, a few seconds. And from the app dashboard, now you can see that our mobile application Hello World is ready to be installed. So you can either uh, scan the QR code or you can just start the download from here. You see in the bottom left corner that the download is 
running. As soon as the download completes, you will see into your download folder of your computer the APK ready to be installed. So basically, this is everything that I wanted to show you. And these are the these are our contacts. So I will wait for your questions and your feedbacks about this webinar at the address that you see here. Thank you for your attention and thank you for joining this webinar. And uh, let's give you a warm welcome to the world of WebRatio Mobile Platform 8. Thank you once again for your attention. Goodbye.